VR gaming, couch gaming, tabletop gaming, board gaming. This room does it all. Or it will. You see, beneath its tidy, organized facade is a veritable chaos zone of straps, adapters, cables, game consoles, controllers, and all other manner of accessories that I need to turn into a cohesive gaming experience. And oh, at the center of all of it is gonna be LG's QNED Mini LED. LG sponsored this video and this bad boy will hold over a thousand nits in a 25% window. That coupled with features like auto low latency mode, extremely low input lag and accurate colors are gonna make this the perfect centerpiece for this space because as you guys may or may not have noticed, there's a lot of freaking bright windows coming into this room, meaning that a low brightness TV is not really gonna cut it. Oh, look at this, the calories here. I'm obviously gonna need some help. Oh, I was about to say help from our sponsor, but our sponsor's LG. Roll the intro. The first thing we're gonna need is your Geek Squad skills, Jamie. That's right, you're mounting another TV. Why not? But this one presents some special challenges. See, we thought LG was gonna send the 86 inch version of this, which yes. is an amazing set, but we got the 75. That's why Jake got a wall mount that weighs over 50 freaking pounds. Team lift. Meanwhile, Dan, you and I actually get the worst job. Oh crap. We get to move the foosball table, which, prepare yourself, weighs about a thousand pounds. I don't think I'm that strong. And clear all the camping stuff out of here. So first things first, let's get this moved over that way. Yeah. Oh, he was lying. Well, it feels like it to me. The thing about being really slow to put away your Christmas stuff is by the time you put it away, it's almost time to take it back out again. <laughs> There's not really anywhere to pile this stuff in here. Yeah, there's some right here. Oh my gosh. In all seriousness, how do you want this organized? There's no plan, it's real. Uh. I mean, I get it, you're new here. You figure, ah, it's gotta be just an act the way he is on camera. <laughs> <laughs> organized. Three guesses what this is. Suppository. Clear evidence that I have small children. Uh. That's what I was going for. Close though. Hello, homeowner. Where would you like me to hang the TV? Oh my God. Can you just dial back the Geek Squad for, <laughs> for 10 I, minutes? You said I had to use my Geek Squad skills. Where would you like me to hang it then tell me it's too high? <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. We're probably gonna end up with the 86 inch version of it at some point, because sure. it's a pretty big wall. But we also have to consider that this can't go too far that way. Yeah. So that we have access to the vacuum hose yeah. plug. And then it can't go too far this way because this grill right here is the air return for the HVAC. We've got both power and network in a recessed wall plate here so that we could even mount something like a completely flat gallery style TV. We've got a conduit here that runs two locations. It runs down to the bottom. Ah. So if we wanted to have an AV receiver or something like that in the console, it would, wait, what? Holy crap, did they not? Oh, yeah. they didn't punch the hole for it. No. Okay, we'll have to find that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Wait, oh, I see. Wait, what the, yeah, what the, the hell was their intention here? Oh my God. Oh, it's right behind the whites. It just oh, no. is right behind the electrical socket. Why would they do that? Well, I, uh, you, as you can, t um, it's not, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, this is stupid. You want me to take the, hang on? Uh, yeah, I should kill the breaker here though. Uh, were you about to stick a screwdriver in there? Yeah, whatever. It's 120 volts between friends. Yeah, if we share it, it's only half. This one's tripped. Basically Something's singing. Yeah, it's the microwave. Uh, the breaker apparently tripped. No, no. Oh, these are, these are not the right ones. No. 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 Yeah, it was that one. Wait, so it's off? Yeah, it's, it's off. off. We found where the fish wire comes out. Yeah. But it appears to be just like a hole in the wall. There's yeah. no actual conduit in there. Oh, good. Yeah, we have no idea if that's going where we think it is, but the fish wire seems to know where it is. Yeah, this is not very professionally done, um, in my opinion. Mm. Our low voltage contractors watching, you heard me. I wouldn't have done it that way, but I'm also not a low voltage contractor. Why is nothing ever simple? That's what I'd like to know. 
Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well it works. I guess it works. There's just no point of egress for it. No. And there was no plan for HDMI other than just what? You kind of just run it like bareback right next to the freaking metal contacts. Like I don't understand what they what their intention was. Also, they kinked this Cat 6A in a couple of spots. Oh, nice screwdriver. Thanks. We're so gonna get be one. LTTstore.com eventually. Someday. We are going to take the TV out of the box, Dan and I. We're gonna ma measure up the, the plate on the back of the TV. Dan doesn't know how to use a knife, that's fine. And then we're gonna see how it's gonna sit on the wall. We'll use the template for that. While they're working on that, I am finally going to replace my ancient NFS12A fans with these NFP12 Reduxes. They're better for static pressure, which I actually found was a problem because I've got a grill in the bottom here that made it so that it was quite a bit more restrictive. This is the compartment that contains the VR gaming PC, by the way. Whatever you do, don't break the sponsor TV. That's a good idea. It's a thick boy. That's how you get full array local dimming though. It uses an IPS panel and then it has a mini LED array behind it that will selectively dim in the darker parts of the scene and selectively brighten in the brighter parts of the scene to achieve a much, much better than native contrast ratio. Natively, this thing will do a little over a thousand to one according to ratings.com. And then with the most aggressive local dimming setting, it'll do more like 6,000 to one. Andy, I'm gonna put the arms on the back of the TV and Dan's gonna throw the instructions away because we don't read them anyway. But why we're doing that is so that we can take a measurement so that we know uh, where the TV's gonna sit on the wall. Dan, have I ever told you how many TVs I've mounted? Well, judging by your experience, maybe one or two at least? At least two. It's like somewhere between six and 800. I did it for four days a week, 10 hours a day, two guess, years. Now you get to continue doing that. No, I'm letting you do it this time. Oh, shit. There appear to be plenty of studs to choose from. Well, there's four in this room. Nice. <laughs> this is gonna be way better. Ah! Not only did I upgrade the fans, but I also got these cool little noise isolating thingamaboobers that cover the entire frame of the fan. So we shouldn't have any vibrations from these bad boys. I don't think my arms are long enough oh. to reach both sides of this. Oh, Slender Man. You need Slender Man. No, I'm good, I got it. Slenderman's useless. I wish I had put this tool kit somewhere else. <laughs> All right, those aren't going anywhere. Cool. Hey Linus, do you want to be upset about something? Dan wants to make you upset. Sorry, what? This is where the bottom of the TV is going to sit roughly. The bottom of the TV is going to be here. Yeah. yeah. That's way too tall. So we can take this in and just bring it down until it's like, yeah. Uh-huh. Or we could just hang it above the fireplace as God intended. Disgusting. That might actually function. Dan, are we gonna do it like we did the projector screen where we completely mess up the magnet holes and then have to put the thing on twice? How many TVs have you done? 800 or so. I don't know, you're, you're the one measuring there, kiddo. So it's gonna be slightly off center. You okay with that, Linus? I mean, well, the a choice? The, uh, the full motion part of it will make it on center, but also the plate will slide on the, on the watchmark. Oh, wait, no, it won't. Oh, the hoochamajoodles. Because what we could do is take this off yeah. And then have a horrible, horrible hole in the wall, like that one. What? Why is it that every time I tune into what they're saying, it's something awful? Something awful? Yeah. Well, um, so where's the sledgehammer? And then we'll make a bigger hole. Also, don't let them see this. Don't, yeah, don't let them see that. Why don't we sort through here and figure out what some of the key items that need to go in the console are? We've got the Wii U network switch. This will do 10 gig to the main computer here, and then a 10 gig link back to the house, and one gig to everything else. That's from Asus. Uh, oh, VR trackers. This is a Vive Tracker 2.0 and a track belt. So this gives me hip presence in VR. That's why I can never lie in VR. OG shield, a big fat heavy one. Ultimately all gonna have to be wired in somehow. Ow! That ain't going anywhere. Can you try and hang off it, Dan? Oh my goodness, you guys are putting the TV on. Yeah. Uh, do you need help? Can no. I help? Nope, we're done. That's uh, it. What, that was it? It doesn't look very done. Uh, I guess it's a good time to mention the anti-glare coating on the front of the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not on right now, but that's another thing that the additional brightness will help with is reducing glare from these windows back here. Wow, in spite of the weight, um, hey, credit to this mount. It's 
pretty manageable, actually. I kind of have access to the conduit hole here. Okay, this TV is officially never coming this far out from the wall again, because I'm gonna need some more slack. There comes a time in every man's life when he must move the stand closer to the wall. Yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say. Oh! What, what? <laughs> it, tried, it tried to rip the Oh. Well, that was close. Yep. Oh, we good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And easy. Like, yeah. Freaking easy. All right. Our Tascam's batteries are dead, so we're filming on my cellular telephone. He's um, currently taking down a lighthouse for Linus's VHAR unit. Now we're gonna go up in the attic and take that wire. Da oh, down. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan is currently engulfed in whatever that is. It doesn't taste good. It's trapped behind a thing. I have to go deeper in. He has I'm to gonna go... get very, very fluffy. I hope nothing bites me. It goes through the f***ing wall. Where is this moving anything over there? Where you are? Yes. Well, can you pull some black wire? Dan has emerged from the attic. More fluff than man. <coughs> Dan, tell me how they taste. Like blood. Uh, oh, oh, oh no. Ah, success. Oh God. Dan, how would you rate our success today? Yes. Yes. Yes out of five? Yeah, five out of seven, perfect score. Perfect score? All right. I'm hoping to just transplant my old Harmony remote setup here and just pick up right where I left off. So it's one button to select all the right inputs and outputs and you know power on devices, power off devices. If not, I'll have to find another solution. There are other universal remotes that exist now that Logitech shuttered the Harmony division, or I could just rely on CEC. But the issue is that with a PC, relying on CEC, which is where you power on one device and it tells the associated devices to power on, is that PCs are just not really designed with that in mind. So what you need is one of these old Microsoft IR receivers, and then you can tell it to issue a sleep or wake command to the computer so that it won't just be sucking back 100 watts all the time. It's got a 3080 in there. Soldering some wires, and then Dan and I are gonna try and figure out how this thing works. Some kind oh. of transfer. Always make sure that when you're working on high voltage electronics, you use a metal chair so that if you screw up, you don't have to do it anymore or come to work again. Mm -hmm. This is a really neat little box. It's basically a 12 volt distribution block. It'll deliver about an amp to, well, it looks like 18 different sources. Yeah. So we're plugging all of the lighthouses into this. Yeah, of having we're definitely doing that. Wall warts in here. Well, I plugged the transformer in and that didn't immediately explode. So Sick. let's try it with this. Okay. Ready? I see it. Something just happened. Oh. A light flashing. Oh, it's moving. Is there a laser inside there? There is a laser and there's a little motor and it spins the laser and it blinds wow. us. Don't oh, don't, don't breathe that. Don't breathe this. Okay, we're done. It's like there's a law against everything going right in a vlog. Two out of our four power cables for the VR base stations are dead in some way. This one doesn't appear to terminate anywhere. And the one over on this side seems to have gotten a nail through it at some point because we can find the other end of it, but can no work, no power. The good news is, hey, LG, good job. The TV managed to turn on, so that's awesome. But there is a bit of extra work that I'm gonna have to do because an excellent attempt was made at cable managing and installing everything into the <clears throat> console, but this computer uh, does not go in like that because the intake is right here, so it needs to sit right side up so it can draw that fresh air from the bottom fans in. Uh, let's go, oh wow, look at this. This door is gonna come off too. Freaking fantastic. Thanks, Wayfair. Is this one from Wayfair? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. And let's never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something special about this machine. It's got this old, I believe it's made by Sonnet, old USB card that has an individual controller for every one of the four ports. Having more than one of these on a single controller, and you know, some motherboards might have two or maybe three controllers, but having them share with any other devices can lead to unexpected problems. So I've given each of them their own dedicated USB controller. Freaking ridiculous. 
There we are. That is a couch. Go on. Oh, man, it's almost like That's I know how you do. use a couch. Are we trying to make things look pretty for the video or are we just trying to go for functional? How about pretty functional? Well, I have one thing that might make it look better, which is really easy. The carpet? A carpet. What a nice. good Let's idea. Let's do it. Let's do the carpet. Okay, down we go. We are not centered. Not, not, even, <laughs> not, not even, even a little. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. I had these grand designs about how I was gonna put little magnetic things and have everything cable managed really perfectly against the back. But instead, we're gonna do classic cable management. Okay, there, now it's centered. Nice. I mean, the space is starting to look kinda gamery, actually. All right, let's talk features, finally. Okay, we got Dolby Vision support. We've got filmmaker mode support. Uh, here, if we fire, oh, you, do I have Plex on here? Heck yeah. Is this even gonna find my Plex server? This was last plugged in at my old place. No internet connection. What? The switch is not powered. Oh, because I didn't plug it in. Is the sound bar kicked in? Settings, HDMI arc device. Look at that, did it just pick it up? No problems. I mentioned that it has the Alpha 7 processor, does like 4K upscaling. This is 4K content anyway, but. Uh, it has that, so that's the reason that I chose to use my old shield that does not do AI upscaling here, and then I've got my new shield over in the theater room. Actually, the glare is not that bad, which is exactly the goal in this room, even with the studio lights on. Motion smoothing is on, that's stupid, so let's go ahead and fix that. I think there's actually more optimal setting than off, so don't quote me on that, but off is one way to make sure you're not getting any kind of smoothing. Wow, the HDR looks awesome though. I'm fairly certain it's on. It's not even, on. wait, it's not on? You know, ratings said that their SDR readings for this TV were really good, like really bright. But wow, that's really bright. I thought HDR was enabled. Well, I guess we're sliding all the way to the right. Okay, and that's better. This looks awesome though. Not much else to say. Thanks LG for sponsoring this video. We're gonna enjoy many an hour playing games in here. Massive shout out, Dan and Jamie from Logistics who were coerced into being here against their will. Uh, help help us. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll enjoy the last time LG sponsored a living room facelift. It's a pretty cool video as well. Stark before and after. Oh, there's your problem. Your anus ain't distended enough. <laughs> oh God.